Start scrolling. Start scrolling your phone. I'm leaving today. Watch this. One, two, three. Is that a toenail? It's a bottle protector. I bet he would have been really scared. I bet the kitten would have been very scared. He's looking around like, what the fuck's going on? Guys, there was no kitty at the last uh, episode. What's wrong? You can see it. Well, listen, this is an independent operation, all right? We're a startup. We're a startup company. We're a startup company, like Microsoft and eBay. I can't stop looking at him. Bill Gates drinks a fuck ton of Diet Coke, and he started up. What was it? Um, Napster? (laughs) Napster? What's the other one? LimeWire? Yeah. Napster's the one with the cat. That's the one you would have been a fan of. There was LimeWire and Napster. I did all of them. So did I. My dad loved it. LimeWire, Napster. There was another one, too. BearShare. That was like Rogue. I think it was BearShare. No, I never used that one. That one was a little later. Not as good. They thought they were cute and kitschy with a bear, but it's like, guess what? (laughs) Napster already stepped in and had the cat. We don't need another animal. <laughs> hey, welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the podcast, everybody. It's Slop City Day. Uh-oh. You know what? This episode is going to come out on Thanksgiving. Are or maybe you we'll take a break. Me? Maybe we'll take a Thanksgiving break. No, we shouldn't take a break because the Native Americans didn't get to take a break. You know what? You're fucking goddamn right. They had to defend themselves against the white man, as usual. <sighs> I am going to be very blunt with you. <laughs> I'm a white man. <laughs> no, I am um, just kidding. We have one that uh, produces a podcast for us. There he is. Uh, say big ups to Randy. Uh-oh. Uh, got him. He, the only me. reason we have a man doing that job is because a woman, frankly, couldn't handle a job like that. Well, women are not equipped to handle anything that has to do with computers. Or anything that involves doing two two tasks at once. I had a gentleman. Guess who it was, actually? Donald's brother yesterday. I met oh, him. Oh, no. Is his name Ronald? No, his <laughs> name. <laughs> Fuck. No, his name's Rick. And uh, Richard. He's He's younger than him. And at the end of their uh, meal, they are (laughs) – Donald got a a cup of chicken noodle soup and um, Rick got an eight-piece toasted ravioli. At the end of the meal? No, no, no. I mean like I'm just giving you the lay of the land of what they did. He had a Diet Coke with lime. Donald drinks his beverage with lime. They had – you know, they're – it's funny. They say that siblings are like each other and uh, they both really – Enjoy lime and saying things about women. So, <laughs> very fun times. But no, so he, <laughs> here's how they were different from each other. So, Rick, at the end of the, they're, they're getting ready to pay their tabs. And they're getting ready to move on to the next destination, which is another bar that Donald frequents. Uh, this is one that he hasn't been kicked out of. He's been kicked out of multiple bars, asked not to come back. <laughs> Because he says things like, oh, I want to, I just, oh, I love women. I love women. Does he say that? Oh, yeah, dude. He once told a lady he'd like eat her clit and stuff. Oh. (laughs) Yeah. And I was like, you don't even know where the clit is. Uh, If I could find it, (laughs) I would love to lick it. He says, "Mm, I love women. He Ew. really does, like, he'll say that, yeah, whatever. You know the story. He says, ah, I've got the Donald 2 inscribed on my uh, button-up shirt because the Donald 1 is in the White House. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a lair. Wow, that's original. You're much older than him. <laughs> but I'm looking good today. So yesterday, his brother is trying to pay the tab, and he says, to me, excuse, says excuse me, uh, ma'am, ma'am, Tina, Tina, that's your name, right? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. He pulls out a napkin out of his pocket with a bunch of writing on it and sets it down on the bar. 
and he's holding up a card in front of me. He goes, do you know what this is? It is very clearly one of those like vanilla cash cards that you get at like well, like somebody gives you for a uh, you know stocking stuff right or whatever. It's like hundred dollars. Very simple, very simple <laughs> concept. And it's got a Visa or Mastercard logo on it. Yes, and it says plain as day on the card. <laughs> usually like a hundred fifty, whatever. It's just a fucking cash card. And he looks at me, and goes, "Do you know what this is?" <laughs> I said, yeah, I know what this is. He goes, all right, here's what's going to happen. You're going to have to establish a PIN number. (laughs) (laughs) And he pulls out this napkin with so much writing on it. I mean. (laughs) What the fuck? It looks like he was doing math on that. There was... The card number, the expiration date, the words establish a pin. No. Yeah. I mean, he's freaking out about it. He goes, so listen, the pin number that we want established when you swipe the card into your sales system is 197 or no, 1920. I don't remember. It was what I don't even remember the date. And he goes, it's the year Donald was born. So (laughs) let's be honest. It was not the (laughs) seventies. It was probably like 1910. Um, And I'm looking at letting him talk because I'm just, he goes, because, you know, the the bartender at a bar we went to last night, she couldn't understand the concept of this thing and that you needed to establish a (laughs) pin. And and then he gets into deep details about the bartender at the place they were last night. He goes, "Ah, her name's Kelly. And boy, she was the only one on bartending last night place was busy running around like a chicken with her head cut off and i was just like oh okay and he's going on and on and she couldn't establish the pin (laughs) and (laughs) i would have been like sir just stop you have to establish the pin sir i looked at he goes and i said well i go who told you you need to i said first of all rick nice to meet you (laughs) second of all (laughs) who told you that you need to establish a pin he goes well kelly told us there was a problem with this shows it to me again <laughs> the card that Kelly told us there was a problem with this card and so I called the company and they told me that we need to establish a pin. and I look at him I go okay first of all I'm not going to do any of that because that's not how this works what I'm gonna do <laughs> is I and I go and he's like no 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 you need to establish I go no I don't just listen to me <laughs> And I grab whatever, grab the card, the whole thing, swipe it. It works out very easily. He goes, did you establish the pin <laughs> while I'm down <laughs> at the end of the bar? And I looked at him. I go, no, I told you we don't need to do any of that. I go, all you do is swipe it. And I said, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but Kelly didn't know what she was talking about. She probably tried to swipe it as something different. It's it's very simple. You just you swipe it. It's done. And they're looking at me like, Whoa. This girl's very smart. He goes into talking about, he says to me afterwards, he goes, oh, well, that's good. And then he's explaining to Donald how this card works. And Donald, mind you, barely knows where he is half the time. So he just knows to open his eyes and start grabbing for boobs. (laughs) Like Donald's the kind of guy, he nods off and he's like, oh, (laughs) goes in for a reach (laughs) so i'm walking away they're signing their dumb fucking visa credit card slip and rick is explaining to donald he says okay so this card i'm gonna put it in your wallet and donald's like why what do we need it for you know he's very upset he doesn't understand (laughs) i i told him i said donald just use the card when you come here i'll know what to do he says yeah she always knows what to do Ugh. Just, you know, grody, whatever, grossy, Pelosi. So then Rick, who uh, I learned very quickly is a conspiracy theorist, <laughs> he looks at me and goes, do you have a debit card? I said, yeah, I have a debit card. He goes, get rid of it. <laughs> oh, no. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, because listen, these guys, they'll hack into your stuff. I mean, all of these men, they're good. I go, well, some of them are women. And he goes, <laughs> No, they're not. Women are women can't deal with this stuff. He said, "You know who's deal, doing this?" 
a guy that's sitting in his bed at home alone, hacking into computers. <laughs> oh, shit. Mm, I feel sad for this older gentleman. Well, I mean, I'm going to be honest. He ha- was in much better condition than Donald. <laughs> so <laughs> he wasn't in, uh, I'm not sure of his mental state, but. Did he say you're looking good today or anything of this, of the. Did Rick? S- yeah. No. At one point, Donald goes, oh, I love women. <laughs> I can't. And I go, okay. (laughs) And then Rick goes, you see, me and Donald, this is how we're different. He lives for women, and I live to eat. (laughs) And Donald goes, I live to eat women. (laughs) That's a perfect response. I I got to give him credit for that. very good. I looked at him, I go, damn, that was fucking good. (laughs) Uh, and then he fell back he asleep. Says, he says, well, his eyes were closed when he was saying it. <laughs> because he was, when his eyes are closed, I think he nods off so much because he's just constantly thinking about pussy. <laughs> and like, <laughs> he's closing his eyes trying to remember what it looks like, you know? Does he need some puss? Uh, I am not. He could, I don't. <sighs> he gave me $20 the other day and he goes, do this. And I look at him, I go, <laughs> no. He goes, you want me to pull another one out? Another $20 bill. <laughs> and in that moment, I felt my uh, soul exit my body. You're like, okay. I didn't do it. And then another girl that I work with uh, says to me, she goes, Tina, you got to do what you got to do. I'm getting that fucking $60. <laughs> <laughs> she walked over and kissed him on his cheek, and I was Ew. like, "Wash your mouth." He's Take a Clorox wipe to that mouth. Jerking off under the bar. Oh God, he's doing something. <laughs> Someone did tell me that he left the bathroom the other day and just had piss all down in the back of his pants. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, "You know, do you tell him or not?" And I was like, "No." Down but- the back of his pants. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Donald, do you need help in the restroom? Hmm. You're not peeing good today. You're peeing real bad all over the place. It's, uh, so get rid of your debit cards, everyone, because they coming for you. They'll hack into your computer and <clears throat> commandeer it. Yep. Like they're commandeering a ship. Oh, God. Boomers. Am I right? Okay, boomer. <laughs> Somebody uh, called me a fat, disgusting pig today. And I said, okay, Boomer, which is my new favorite <laughs> thing. And then he responded with, shut up, you R word. What's R word? R E T. I'm not going to say it. No, the it, R word. You did whisper it. I, I mean, only but- whispered the first three letters. And I uh, blocked, that is- I blocked him because I'm like, this guy's an idiot. You blocked his ass. I don't block people, Do but I think- had to do him. Do you think he was a fan or he stumbled upon it? Oh, I want- he stumbled. Okay. I wonder if he's going to be at home like, Cindy, give me your phone. I want to check out what Libby Higgins is doing. Oh, no. She fucking blocked me. He's one of those older people that believes everything I do is real. So, Which video did he uh, tell you call you a fat fucking bitch on? I think it was the Popeyes one. How was... I, I didn't get to watch the video. How was the sandwich? It was not good. It wasn't? No. I mean, it was okay. Mm. I wouldn't say that it's the best thing I've ever had. They put too much mayonnaise on it. I, I used to be very anti-mayonnaise. Oh. I got the regular and the spicy. Both of them were subpar. Did the spicy um, <laughs> make me shit? Yeah. No. Probably. I sh- uh, I shit my pants the other night. Did you really? Uh, yeah. Ooh. Uh, her fucking face right now. She's got her eyes closed. I mm. I went to the Cracker Barrel earlier in the day. This was oh, I love Cracker Barrel so much. I had, the, it was a snow day, so I was like, I'm going to go to Cracker Barrel. And I got. Oh, that's so sweet. I love it. I got what's called a Cracker Barrel sampler, which I've never had. And it had meatloaf, okay. dumplings. And some other meat. And then it had three sides, which was way too much food. It had corn. Like, but it, enough corn to fill a can. It, what kind of bowl was it in? Like one of those little monkey dishes? It was like all on the same plate. 
Oh my god! And then coleslaw, what macaroni and cheese, side? macaroni and cheese. I, you don't get the apples? No, grody. What do you mean grody? I don't like hot apples. Svetlana and Igor loved the apples when I was growing <laughs> up, so I still fuck Ooh. with the apples. Well, I ate that and drank coffee and Coke at the same time. Whoa, Fine. so you were zooming. I was churning. Later on that- You were walking through the fucking old country go? store, looking around, asking questions about everything in there. Where did I go that night? Oh, I went to the gym- Came home within, uh, I'd say, 15 minutes of getting home. I started churning and burning. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, great. Get out of the car, walking to the door, start <laughs> shitting my pants. <laughs> and I'm wearing the my workout pants that are very tight. The jogger ones? No. Leggings? Things. Leggings. Those very tight. Hot, tight leggings. Uh, <laughs> shit is inside of... My pants and underwear. <laughs> but not going anywhere because these pants are, are like compression pants. You know what, though? At, at least you weren't wearing the joggers because that shit would have slipped right into your sockies, into your fucking shit smelling shoes. You'd have been are, fucked. Are you ready for the best part? Oh, no. Get to the toilet, pull my pants down. <laughs> at least two cans of corn <laughs> in my underwear. <laughs> Like it was straight off the cob. Like no one had ever chewed it. Uh, um, at least two cans. I don't remember eating that much corn. Um, <laughs> my level of disgust with myself at that moment was sky high. And um, I thought to myself, well, this is... This is why this guy gave me underwear the other day, Jesse. I just don't know why if you chew up a piece of corn, it comes back out not mangled. It's like it just <laughs> binds back together while it's in your fucking intestine. Because there are times that I'm like, I am, I am so sure that I chew that up. You know when I shit out corn? I shit out corn regularly. I'd say yeah, three times a month. Because I get Chipotle. I love Chipotle. And I know some people right now are thinking, no, Qdoba over Chipotle. No, you're wrong. Chipotle, freshest ingredients in town. They have this corn salsa that I get on there. And I don't fuck around with my Chipotle. I chew that shit up. I chew it up so fine and tight. I'm, I'm having, I am excited to eat it. I am positive I chew it up. But when I shit in the morning or 20 seconds later... <laughs> It's a full little corn. One full corn. I don't understand. I'm chewing it. I, and it was very, and, and I don't want to talk anymore about this because it was the most disgusting thing I've ever done. But it was uh, a diarrhea with corn. <clears throat> full kernels. Okay, so th there was a reason up there. I read that. That's pretty, that's pretty wild. Corn is an especially common culprit for undigested food in stool. This is because corn has an outer shell of a compound called cellulose. Is that like cellulite? Uh, is that like celery? Is that like celery? Your body doesn't contain enzymes that specifically break down cellulose. However, your body can break down the food components that are inside corn. So that's what it is. It's a little shell. But what I but if I'm chewing it, if I'm chewing it apart, this, I'm going to do an experiment. I'm going to eat corn and rip it to shreds inside of my mouth. I'm going to then it swallow up. it. Yeah, and then see how it comes out. It better not come out like a somebody poured a can of corn in my pants. <laughs> Oh, my God. What did you do with those? I mean, walk us through afterwards. I had to do the dump in the toilet, <laughs> dump the product in the toilet, then put everything in the shower and clean it off and then clean it. <sighs> I mean, come on. I sent. I hope I sent. I it. had to do the old dump in the toilet. I had to do the old dump in the toilet. Well, yeah, I had to just. 
you know, when when I shit in my panties, I just like to take I just like to scoop it up kind of like, you know, when you go out to a nice fish restaurant and they just got the big paper on top of the tablecloth. Yes. And they just take all the trash, put it in the middle. They push it in the middle and they take it up. They tie it like a little bindle, like you're about to go on a nice little journey. Right. And there's all the trash and all the fun stuff inside of there. And then you just take that and you dump it straight inside a trash can or toilet. That's what I do with my shitty underwear. Now this uh, I tie it up to a nice little bindle. Clayton, uh, my friend Clayton, I sent him a, a text message pretending that I was his mother. Also, oh sorry, hello, honey. This is your mother again. Listen, honey, I went to the Cracker Barrel yesterday, honey, and I had the sam- the Cracker Barrel sampler uh, mm. meal, which is dumplings, ham, and a, uh, some other meat. But then you get three sides, and I pick corn. And I picked uh, macaroni and cheese, and I picked coleslaw. So basically, it was a cap, you know, a bunch of caps. Anyway, Cab. later, later last uh, last night, I was driving home. I had just, God forgive me, I had just eaten a Chick Fil A, honey. I <laughs> 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 forgot about that part. <laughs> That's I where a Chick Fil A, honey. And um, God forgive me. Here's the deal, honey. I couldn't make it home in time, and I shit my fucking pants, honey. All inside inside of my workout pants, you know, my stretch. Uh, my what do they call my? Uh, you know, my stretchy pants, very compression pants. I get inside, honey. There is a lot of brown diarrhea, and uh, and about two cans of corn inside of my pants, honey. Two cans of corn. I oh. don't even remember eating two cans of corn. Okay, honey? <laughs> but it was in my pants. So we're going to be... <laughs> if you're coming home for dinner, honey, I'm going to have a corn tonight. <laughs> <laughs> honey, if you're coming home tonight, we're going to need you to help me. I need you to bring the hose from outside, bring it inside, and spray it off. And then we're having corn for dinner. I'm making a oh. casserole. I'm making a casserole from my asshole. <laughs> I'm trying to think what I ate at Chick Fil A. I think it was just drinking a big Coke. I had another Coke. Oh uh, God, forgive me. I ate Chick Fil A, <laughs> honey. For, uh, forgive me. I know you were a gay male. I forgive me for eating a Chick Fil A, honey. But I can't resist the chicken. Sandwiches. Honey, I can't help it. They got a nice brown breading. <laughs> it just looks so inviting. Did Randy just take a picture of us? Randy took a picture of us. He's having so much fucking fun right now. He, took <laughs> he a wants picture. corn. He's hungry for corn. Guess what? Thanksgiving's right around the corner. Today's Thanksgiving, motherfuckers. I hope you're eating some corn. Oh, today is Thanksgiving. Yeah, y'all motherfuckers better be shitting out corn today. People make corn corn items on Thanksgiving. Yeah, they put it in a bowl, heat it up in the micro, and put it on the table. Yeah, and then they pretend that they're doing Thanksgiving because it's a... Uh, because, oh, everybody's together. We didn't slaughter an entire <laughs> fucking race of people. Uh-oh, what a fun time. Uh-oh, Guess nobody's what? getting we, smallpox today. Hi, uh, the name's Cassidy. We killed your family, but uh, we would really love to invite you to this great, nice dinner <laughs> we're going to be having down the block. Uh, we also killed all of your buffalo and you oh. know all of your bison. And but, uh, we, oh. we know that we uh, sold them for scraps. And, uh, but but we, we showed you how to grow stuff and we helped you plant. We helped you adapt to this climate and this kind of terrain. Can I be honest with you? None of us white people ever really adapt to this climate. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, you guys are evil. Go back to where you came from. Can't. Sorry about it. Can't do it. But here's what I do have to offer you instead. We are having, as I said at the beginning, a fantastic fun dinner. Over down at a uh, at Larry's place. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, hopefully, it'll be a bar someday. We're, sh- we don't wanna, we don't we don't have the patent yet. But, should uh, we bring Should we bring something? Maybe the the corn that we taught you how to cook, and the seeds that you learned how to grow, and the soil that. Yeah, that's fine. You could bring that if you want. We might just throw it, uh, give it to the dogs for food. But we do have a lot of a bowl of mayonnaise. It's going to be very good. We've got a lot of great white people food that will be sitting front and center on the table. Um, 
I guess I'm thankful that you guys still like us despite uh, trying to wipe, wipe out the whole entire population of us and murdering our families and <laughs> killing our children you know like i said before despite us help helping you basically you guys would have died if it wasn't for us but that's okay i'm thankful that you finally accept us i guess i like that word thankful that sounds really fun maybe we could do something with that hey uh hey john smith john smith john john get over here this guy just had a really good idea he said the word thankful when talking about us murdering his entire race because somehow he still has a positive outlook on life even though we murdered his entire fucking family. I like that word thankful. What's your name? What's your name, son? Uh, Red Hawk. Red Hawk. Red. Oh, that is badass. We play this game every day. It's called, uh, uh, you know, we take a ball, we throw it, someone gets tagged. It's very fun. Yeah. We would love to name our team Red Hawk after you. Well, I mean, I'm Is kind that of, okay? I'm kind of named after like a, it's something very spiritual to us. It's important. You know, hawks are the eyes of the sky and, you know, we really feel like they're looking down on us and helping us whenever things get bad. So it would be kind of weird if you just took our name and, and used it for a sporting event. Wow. Re- uh, guess what, Red Hawk? I am thankful for what you just said. That is great. Spirituality. Oh, God, I love it. Oh. John! John! <laughs> oh. John, get over here and give Red Hawk a piece of turkey! Oh, give I... Red Hawk a piece of turkey! We don't actually eat turkey. Uh, turkeys are very important to the environment around here, and they eat a lot of the rats and, and bugs that kill uh, other larger animals that we eat um it would be disrespectful for us to eat a a turkey okay red hawk let me level with you my wife laura has a great bonnet on she wears it regularly it's uh it would be i would be thankful (laughs) i would be thankful god that's good i would be thankful to give you this bonnet to pass oh. that. How about that? Can, can we can we make a deal on that? And along with the bonnet, we take the Red Hawk thing and the, the well, thankful. I, uh, that is, God, you're a good you're a good man. I just don't like how you guys have taken all of our beautiful ornate jewelry and headdresses and are wearing them like they're a joke. I mean, we spend a lot of time making all these very ornate, beautiful headdresses for our, our ceremonies and things. And, and your kid is running around over there. I feel like he's what? making he's, fun of what do you make, ta- what do you mean he's walking around he's running around with his buddies going oh, oh, oh. I mean yeah. it's, I don't see the problem I feel if like anything that's... we're honoring you you should be thankful for what we are doing but you've killed so many of us I feel like what we have is called Stockholm syndrome have you heard of that never heard of it but stock sounds like a good word that I'd like to be a part of one day it's basically when you be, you begin to uh, side with your captors, the people that hurt you, the people that are abuse you. <sighs> mm. I feel that way about King Henry. <laughs> <clears throat> wrong king, wrong era. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm going to be honest with you. What's your name again? Dave. Dave. Um, I think we're going to sit this party out. I'm going to just go home to my family and and sort of show them that I'm thankful that for them for <clears throat> sticking around with me this whole time, even though they told me that you guys were dangerous and were probably going to kill us. And I'm like, no, they're nice guys. Look at them. They're nice guys. And I didn't listen. You know, I didn't listen to them. <sighs> <sighs> okay, Red Hawk. Well, we uh, had to take the wood that was outside of your home uh, to f- start our party and keep it going. So if you guys get a little chilly, you are more than welcome to <laughs> well, come on down. You took our wood? <laughs> yeah, we had to take it. Do you uh, know how hard it is for us to make tools out of stones to cut down wood? Uh, Yeah, I know it's hard. I looked at that tool and I was like, eh, there had to be... There had to be some kind of scientists that went behind making this. Yeah, me. And then, Red Hawk. And uh, my people. Uh, again, I am thankful. <laughs> I don't for feel you. like you are. <laughs> 
I think you should just get back on your boat and go back to where you came from before you do any more damage. Uh, Newsflash. Uh, the reports are in. We killed a lot of you. So uh, the, the, there's not uh, no coming back. It uh, It is upsetting. So once again, there aren't many options because, uh, yeah, we're, I mean, if, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Listen, Red Hawk, <clears throat> I can't tell you what I think if you guys killed my, my son, Tammy, over there. Rocking around, go, oh, well, uh, you know. Your I son's don't... name is Tammy? Yeah, my son's name is Tammy. He's Even named... for me, I know that's very strange. <laughs> I can't tell you what I think uh, if if you guys killed killed my son, my family. You know, I'd probably be a little upset. But, uh, you know, we've got, we're, we're starting this really cool newspaper here in town. And we would really like to have a picture of all of us sitting down, eating some dinner. So. You know, no, I don't. I don't feel okay talk, with them. Talk to your people, okay? Let them know that I am thankful for them, Red Hawk. I'm just gonna go ahead and, and say ahead of time, I'm not gonna be in attendance, and okay. nobody, we don't want to take a picture. Okay, sounds good. Well, then, uh, you know, maybe we could set up some scarecrow kind of stick figures that look just like you guys. Wow, you are off <clears throat> off base here. Uh, you are out of line. I'm going to go ahead and just go back to my family now. Okay. Uh, sounds good. I'll, uh, yeah. Sorry about the wood. Huh? Thankful for it, you know. Happy Thanksgiving, I guess. I guess. Okay, I'm going to take this mayo and jerk off with it. Uh, oh, right I'm not, after I got to get so. out of here. I'm so sorry. I, ooh. <sighs> John, there's <laughs> shit in my corn. <laughs> John Smith. <sighs> Happy Thanksgiving, motherfuckers. <laughs> well, just remember Thanksgiving, you know, what happened. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't even learn it like that in school. I I, like, I I learned it improperly. I learned it as I remember pictures and like it was like that's what I have burned in my brain from Thanksgiving as a child was like, oh, ch- they were they had this nice meal and they just sat around and talked about what they were thankful for. Yeah. And it also seemed like it was always like really whitewashed, like the white people were helping the Native Americans. Oh, yeah. No. Nope. Not a chance. I think we had a more accurate betra- portrayal. What we just did there? Yeah. Yeah, why don't you teach that in your fucking public schools, America? We could go around the schools. Up. Me and you could do little skits, if yeah. you will. And we'll be like, this is the real Thanksgiving. We'll do little plays with the children. Ask them to step up. We'll like... Give them a script that has <laughs> a lot of expletives in it. Saw so lots of skits at my school this week. Oh yeah, what kind? What kind are we talking? Pete the Cat. What the fuck? Is it's that? a famous book. And uh, then you yesterday, I'm not fucking cultured. <laughs> I don't, famous uh, book. Not that you're not cultured. It's a famous book among grade schoolers. Mm. When did it become hip? I know about Baby Shark. All right, I'm hip. Baby Shark. Shark is the song. Well, I'm just saying I know things about children. <laughs> Well, when it was a book, oh, it was published in 2008. <laughs> I was doing heroin in 2008. Didn't have time to read Pete the Cat. Okay. Pete the Cat. Here's the deal with Pete the Cat. He's always trying to get in situations. You know, he's got this pair of shoes, Pete, this white shoes. So he's walking along. He steps in a fucking thing of blueberry. Oh. His shoes turn blue. And he says to himself, I love my blue shoes. I love my blue shoes. I love my blue shoes. I love my. And then, uh oh, Pete just stepped in a thing of strawberries and his shoes turned fucking red. And again, Pete, did he cry? <coughs> Goodness, no. He just kept walking along. Stepped in mud. They turned brown. By the end of it, he stepped in a puddle of water and his shoes turned white again is he singing uh eddie i love my red shoes i love my red shoes i love my brown shoes yep i love every color shoes so it's a way to teach children and and the moral of the story is that no matter what happens you just keep walking along and singing your song 
That's what Pete teaches us. Oh. But what I want kids to learn from it is don't fucking step in those blueberries. Pay attention. Look. Use your eye. Be aware of your surroundings. If you see a a giant pile of blueberries, step around them, bro. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get that shit on your white shoes, especially if they're Air Jordans. You paid a pretty penny for those. You do not want to get blueberries on them. And if you don't have Air Jordans and you've just got some nice uh, Fila tennis shoes or... Buddies, uh, as they were called. Yep, buddies Buddies. or whatever you've got at a... Whatever you were able to... Dan skin shoes from Walmart. Dan Great. I think that's that's what they need to do. And I'm starting a new series with Carla called Carla's Reading Corner, mm-hmm. reading children's books. And I started, <laughs> I went to that thrift store over there, St. Frederick's of Assisi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And bought a whole bunch of children's books. Carla's going to teach the kids a lesson because it's going to be things like this. When she reads the book, she's going to say, hey. How about instead of fucking stepping in the goddamn strawberries, how about you step aside, bro? How about you look around, pull out your gun, and assess the area <laughs> for any intruders? You know, that's, you know, I I think that's a great idea. That's That's what we should be doing. We should be talking about real hard things instead of, uh-oh, you know, what what are, let's, what are some famous uh, kid stories? Uh, I don't remember a lot of them because I was uh, reading very high caliber stuff when I was a child. Let's see. Another one is. Um, I was reading Lolita. <laughs> uh, f- uh, children's books. Now. There's Good Night Moon. I know about that one. That's that's one. And that's one. Is that the one where the bear is a bear? Um, uh, Randy, will you look up Good Night Moon? There's one about uh, Good Night Moon that has a bear in it. And. For the majority of the story, this child bear is alone. (laughs) Where are these bears' parents? The same with Goldilocks, you know. Why Why is this bear family allowed to go into these people's homes? I'm sorry. Why is this child Goldilocks, who is a minor, I'm assuming, an adolescent, allowed to go into a forest alone into these bears' homes? And test out their stuff. She's eating porridge. She doesn't know what it is. Mm -mm. It could be poison. I'm going to be honest. This sounds like a metaphor for my teenage years. You know, Mm. people have asked me, hey, Tina, where were your parents when you were doing heroin? When Mm. you were doing drugs? Where were they? And I'm like, I know exactly where they were. They were in the suburbs of Kansas City watching Safari Live. Being good people, cooking food, hanging out. And I <coughs> was a master manipulator, run around. So listen, there's a few options for where their parents could have been. Mm. They could be out doing crack cocaine. They could be out smoking doobies. They could be out grocery shopping. They could be out drinking at the at the local pub. Or they could be taking a nap because they have a migraine. Or they could, I mean, there's there's a lot of options. But the neglect thing is, happens in different forms. It does, but if like Goldilocks, from what I understand, she was maybe six to seven years old. Mm-hmm. That's young. Are you going to let your six-year-old child walk out into the woods alone? No, they'll end up missing. Yeah. And to know that that child laid in the bed of a not only a child bear, but a mother bear's bed and a dad's bed. And then to fall asleep in the perfectly sized child bed? <clears throat> I'm going to say right now the biggest problem with that whole fucking story is that Mama mama Bear and Dada Bear have separate beds. Let's... That is a problem. To me, that's a problem. Why aren't they sleeping in the same bed? I don't You're know. You're raising a kid together. You, get, you love each other. You're fam. Why are you sleeping in separate beds? If anything, why don't you push your bed? If you don't have enough money to get one big bed, why don't you push your beds together nice and close and hold hands mm-hmm. while you sleep? And if you don't want to hold hands, at least be close to the one you love. Mm-hmm. Love the one you're with. You know? I, I, I slept in separate beds in a former relationship that I was in. Guess what? <laughs> you're not in them anymore. We were doomed. We were doomed and we were done. I don't think that the messages, though, about the bears home life 
I think the message is about the child's home life who's being let out into the woods alone to basically go. It's like if you take a kid to the zoo and just let them go in any cage they want. They're going to get mauled. Yeah, they're going to get harambeed. And we're letting our children read these books? <laughs> Mm-mm. Not on my time nope. here. This stops today. You heard it here on Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> I'm not just letting my kid read a book that's pushing this propaganda about no. kids being going in the woods. Here's what we will do. We'll let them read the book and and as, as is, as is, read, you know, Goldilocks or whatever the fuck children's book as is. They talk to us about it afterwards, formulate their own opinion, and then we fuck up <laughs> their whole world. We say, "Uh uh-uh, so here's the problem, little Debbie. Here's the problem with this book. We're about to shake up everything you know. Because guess what? Kids ain't walking outside anymore alone. Not on our watch. We're going to have a strict, tight, you know how some people have those leashes for dogs where they put them around their waist? I'm going to have one that goes fucking 10 kids deep. We're going to be following me around. Okay. All right. I just think it's good. Uh, you know, they used to do a lot of banning of books back in the day, and I think they should bring it back. Mm-hmm. It's pro- it is propaganda. Sure. Just pay attention to what your kids are reading. Mm-hmm. They're That's reading, all I'm saying. Yeah. They're reading books like Where the Red Fern Grows or Harry Potter. Be real with them. Red Fern Grow was was one of the first books that I read that I cried and I cried. Me too. And I was like, man, this book really took me somewhere. I wasn't expecting. Uh, I cried on many levels because at that time I was like, if I wanted a dog, I would just go on the internet and I would find it. (laughs) And this kid had to hang it on newspaper and cut out he had to cut out a piece of paper and hope that somebody that lived closer to those dogs didn't buy the dogs yet and that the dogs made it through childbirth and all this stuff he had to wait he had to sit at home and talk to his pa and ma and his siblings and just say I really want these dogs and the parents were like yeah let's wait it out and see and I was like the hardest part about that book for me wasn't the dogs passing away it was the the waiting that the child had can you imagine waiting six weeks after you sent money that you worked (laughs) I don't know, seven years for to buy a pair of fucking hounds. Well, can you imagine? That kid's an idiot. You don't send cash in the mail. (sighs) You don't. Not now, not never. We all know it. You wire, you go to Western Union, and you you wire the funds. What was the kid's name and where the red flag was? I don't remember. I don't either. Also, he could have went up to Walmart. There's always somebody holding a box of dogs, <laughs> trying to give them away for free. Trying to give them away, and the greeters trying to shoo them <laughs> off. And we're like, Mr. Greeter, this is not your job. You're not a security guard. You're not the police. I don't even know what the kid's name is. God, I can't. I, that book just Billy devastated Coleman? him. Davis Billy. 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 1974. Oh, my God. What? No, no. The book, I feel like, came out way earlier. That's the movie. 61. Oh, my God. Jesus. And I read that in the 80s. That book was old as shit. I read that in probably the late 90s, probably like 99. I remember reading it before the millennium, before uh, my dad was like, listen, everybody's going to be telling you that we're going to die on January 1st, 2000, and the computers will explode. Let me tell you something. It's not going to happen. Y2K? Yeah. And my mom was like, oh, my God, look at this adorable box of Cheerios. It's purple. <laughs> Let's eat it. And we all shared a bowl of that that night. One bowl. <laughs> one one, bowl one big bowl. Dip in your spoon. Take a bite. <laughs> 
Oh, you shared milk? We shared milk. We caught, oh. we, we shared it. But no, I remember reading where the Redford grows before that. And that, that, I mean, I was, I was illegally downloading music that my father showed me how to do at that time in the late nineties. All right. And this kid, and li- listen, I, I understood. I understood what the kid was doing. He had a dream and he wanted to, he did it. Worked hard. Oh, two years is how long he saved that. I Jesus. Don't even, how much were the books or how much were the dogs? I can't remember. I think it was like $200. Oh, man. And they're running around and they're in that big, big fight that night. And it's raining and the dogs, it's cold. me and my dogs are out. And one of the dogs gets mauled by a mountain lion. <laughs> it was a mountain lion, right? Oh, I, I think it forgotten. was. And then the dog died because he loved his sister so much. She fell down. She fell down. She fell down. She fell down. I think he the dog the boy dog dies first. And then the baby girl dog dies after. Cause her heart is broken. <laughs> Yep. Oh, Dan. Oh, Dan. Dan. Oh. Oh, he buried it. Oh, Dan on a high hill overlooking the valley. Oh, Dan. Billy Coleman's up on that hill. His paw is like, Billy, we need you to mix up pancake batter. It's going to take six hours because you got to mill the corn. You got to mill it mill all. Mill the corn? I don't know what the terms are. I don't know anything about farms. Oh, God. I'm so upset. I wish we wouldn't have started talking about that. Why? It just is so devastating. Little Ann. He calls him Old Dan and Little Ann. <laughs> now, if that ain't a double fucking standard, I don't know what is. Why can't she be Old Ann? Why she got to be Little Ann? They're the same age. They're the same fucking age. I got to order this other book. Which book? Called Happy Birthday Moon. You know, Libby, I'm trying to have a fucking deep conversation right now. And she's looking on her fucking phone on Amazon. I'm over here trying to campaign for dog women's rights. And you're over there shitting the fucking bed looking on Amazon. I have to block it out because it was too devastating. Yeah, it was. I remember sitting in class crying. And a boy named Blake wearing a flame button up T-shirt looked over at me and was like, are you crying? And I was like, no, (laughs) you bitch. (laughs) You loser. (laughs) You fucking bitch. I wonder what Dan's doing now. Is that his name? Old Dan, he's dead, buried on the top of a hill. The flame shirt guy. Blake. Blake. I wonder what he's doing. I don't know. I think he's Blake Shelton. (laughs) (laughs) I think he's fucking Gwen Stefani. (laughs) I'm pretty sure he's just banging Gwen Stefani out. All right, you know what we didn't address on this? What? The fucking stuffed animal that I got from a, from a, uh, a number one customer. I was working the bar the other day. Can and I a number, touch it? Yeah, you can touch it. A number one customer named um, Kent. I like that I get to say customer because uh, he was technically a customer at the bar, and he's also a customer of Slop City. He's a Slop citizen. He uh, he he was like twirl around, and I don't know why I just did it. I should have had more because it uh, wasn't uh, Donald. Yeah, and you trust him. Yeah, so I twirled around. And then he threw that behind the bar. And I was like, oh, my God, it's just like figure skating. Oh. So, yeah, Kent uh, gave me that little little doobie. What's its name? It's a beanie bag, a beanie boy. Her name is Zoe. Hi, I'm Zoe. Africa is my home. <laughs> my zigzag stripes keep me safe as I roam. My birthday is April 18th. Now, you can flip these little sequins to make it a whole different color. Yep. That's what's amazing. I am a huge fan of those sequin things. If I was a little kid and I was alive right now, I mean, everything that I, everything that I owned would be that sequin stuff. You know what I like? I like that Kent listens to the podcast, went into a store, mm-hmm. bought this, and then brought it to you. Yeah. That's, how nice is that? 
It's very nice. Kent's a good guy. Did I tell you the story about Kent where he farted in front of his boss lady named Virginia? No. Well, (laughs) (laughs) Randy. I love when Randy starts cracking up. Um, I mean, I don't know this uh, cat named Virginia, but what I do know is that Kent, <laughs> Virginia is a very serious woman. <laughs> Maybe you did. I don't She's know, a very serious woman, and uh, she doesn't like games or fun. She don't like any kind of fart or poop jokes <laughs> or any of that. And I, Kent was in her office talking to Virginia. I'm not sure if she's his secretary. The way that he tells the story is like Virginia is his boss. Oh. But uh, I'm pretty sure she's his secretary and she's just very serious. Like she's like, listen, if you try to fuck me, I'll call the police. Okay. If you try to do any bullshit, you try to pull any bullshit. I've been a secretary for a long fucking time, Kent. And I'm older than you. I've been a secretary since they started calling us secretaries now we're called administrative assistants but i've been a secretary since we were secretaries i used to smoke cigarettes in my office (laughs) (laughs) and uh either way he walked in there and he tooted while he was in her office (laughs) he let out a little (laughs) he let out a fart and virginia virginia was not amused virginia didn't like it at all (laughs) I mean, she was embarrassed for Kent. But is Virginia the way. probably farts at home herself. Of course she does. But she's one of those people who's like, listen, you shouldn't be farting in public. And if you ever talk about sex, somebody should assassinate you. <laughs> oh, my God. I would let Kent fart in front of me. Me too. Any old, any old time. Mm-hmm. We got a lot of gifts recently. We certainly did. As you recall in the live podcast last episode, I got uh, some underwear. And I haven't used them yet because I'm afraid I'll shit in them. Um, well, guess what? You should have put them on after you fucking <laughs> dumped two cans of corny diarrhea. Into nope. your Just showered off and got in the bed. Oh, man. That's fucking ridiculous. You know what else is ridiculous? The fact that corn comes out of your asshole unchewed. Well, it's the shell. It could very well be the shell. But what I'm telling you is I got some very powerful dentures and they grind and crush food. (laughs) And there's no way. I think that someone's coming and stuffing corn up my a-hole when I'm not looking. Full cobs. One, two, three. Could you just turn around? (laughs) Uh, And I'm like, what? Brandon. It's Brandon, your trainer. Brandon stuffed corn up my bottom. Mm-hmm. He wouldn't have time. You know that uh, people die in corn silos because they get suffocated. That's one of my biggest fears. Oh, yeah, because you're in corn <laughs> silos all of the time. No, because I saw a movie one time where somebody got killed like that. They got killed. Then the corn just was pouring on him and he's like, ah, also quicksand. Mm-hmm. These are two big childhood fears. Oh, the corn silo thing terrifies me. You, you ever been caught in quicksand? No, have you? It'll no, but I've seen it on shows like Tarzan. And you are once you're in there, that's it. You're going down in there. Can I be honest? I you can always be honest. Thought quicksand was made up from the Mummy with Brendan Fraser. Quicksand is real, but it doesn't kill you like it does in the movies. Okay. Is quicksand actually quicksand? I don't know what it is. I just thought it was a pool like of sand that sucks you in. And you're like, whoa. Like someone get a long stick and pull me out of here. Man, Libby and I watched. Uh, can you really drown in quicksand? <laughs> You can't. Somebody should have told me that as a kid as I sat around endlessly worrying about falling into a vat of quicksand. Oh, yeah. But what can make quicksand deadly is its ability to trap and hold unsuspecting victims. So you just get stuck in there and you're like, hello? 
Hello? Help! And nobody ever comes and get you, and you're Mm-mm. just stuck. Have you ever been stuck in the mud? Like, had your feet in the mud? Mm, I think maybe one time my shoesies got stuck. That's and I was kinda, scary. Yeah. Especially when it's, like, knee-deep and you just can't. And I couldn't pull get out. Any. Yeah, it's like suctions around you. And then you try to take another step, and it just gets stuck in another hole, and you can't put your hand down because your hand... Your hand's going to get stuck, and then next thing you I'm know... scared. Next thing you know, you're... Next thing you know, you're a mud monster. Next thing you know, you're asphyxiated by mudlet. Asphyxiated. Next thing you know, you got a, you you have a mud full of, lung full of mud. You got a butt full of mud. Man, that's a great place to have diarrhea when you're stuck in mud. <laughs> Just start fucking di- shit in your pants. No one will know. And then the next season, all of a sudden, corn stalks are growing. Mm-hmm. Where does, there hasn't been corn in this county for 30 years. Why is your corn stalks growing? Well, uh, Libby took a big old <laughs> shit when she got stuck in the mud. I mean, so. what else was there for me to do besides shit? Libby. What? I can't tell you how thankful uh-huh. we are that you happen to have explosive diarrhea that day when you got stuck in the mud while you were visiting our town, scouring it to see if you could use it for one of your movie locations. Well, here's the deal. I don't know why you're talking about it like it's past tense. I'm still stuck in this fucking mud, and nobody has come to help me. People walk by and say, hey, how you doing? What's going on? And I'm like, can somebody help me? Help! And they think just because I'm lazy and like to sit out a lot, they just think I'm resting. But I need help. My entire lower body is submerged in mud and has been for the last 365 days. It's a long time. I bet you got a lot of bed sores on your legs from sitting in a spot too long. What I got a lot of is shit in my pants. (laughs) I've been shitting for one whole year. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Good seeing you, Libby. I've been, hey, (laughs) I've been calling goddamn Uber Eats. Every single day. <laughs> and those people don't help me. They don't help me. They just toss me my food and uh, they carry on. Toss me my food into the ravine <laughs> and say, you're a bitch for not tipping. I did tip you. I tipped on the on the app. <laughs> no. <laughs> Y'all, we do need to say a big thank you. <sighs> we need to say a big thank you to everybody that um came out to the the live podcast. It was it was magical, incredible. Randy, what'd you think of it? We'd like to hear what you thought of it. It was a lot of fun, man. Actually, you uh incorporated the audience interaction very well with the games and stuff. Oh, it was a lot wow. of fun. He's giving that us was, a compliment. Absolutely, man. It was a it was a fucking show. That's for sure. It was fun. Whoa, it was a fucking a show. Time. Thanks, Randall. Yeah, it you just know, wasn't you know like you guys sitting here just at the table talking to each other. It was like a show. It was yeah. really fucking cool. We made it oh, happen. Oh Here's what I will God. say: uh, the job. the games that I decided to play, uh, the couple of cards that I added in <laughs> were very juvenile and uh, <laughs> they were dumb and hilarious. And I'm owning it. And that's all. I'm not mad at myself for it. It was great. A lot of people came in. We had two cats from Boston come in. And I'm like, flew in. Oh, I think they went to the whole festival. No, they didn't. They just came for our show. Yes. God damn. I know. Pussy Willow. People came from Springfield, Missouri. People came from Indiana. Indiana. Some gals came from up by Chicago. <sighs> Damn. They were like, we're your favorite lesbians. And I was like. <laughs> You're like, yeah. oh, show me and lick my pussy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. At the end of the show when you're like, all right, I'll be giving hand jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wanted me. I didn't give out one single hand job. Yes, the offer still stands if you want to hand job. Offer still stands. People don't want to be canceled, okay? If somebody actually walked up to you afterwards and said, hey, um, I'm here to redeem 
my hand job. If they were dead serious. And they'd take one look at my hand and the dry skin on it, and they would turn around and walk away. <laughs> because, and this is my favorite story from last weekend, shook Mo's hand. He goes, oh, something pinched me. <laughs> and I turned my hand over. And uh, he said, oh, it was your dry skin. <laughs> Boy, he fucking burned you. It was the with, funniest thing. He burned you with nothing but facts. He didn't have it. That was the, all objectively, everything he just said was a fucking fact. I turned my hand over because I thought maybe it was my flyover bracelet. No, it was this big chunk on my palm that's so dry, it feels like sandpaper that's the real rough one. I don't know what number that is. 13. They have different grades of sandpaper. Oh, they do? Did you know that, Randy? I did not, but well, thanks. I know there's now. a there's what? a real Randy's a Randy does contracting. You don't I know, know. About... Yeah, the uh, lower the number, the rougher the sandpaper. The higher the number, so it was a real finer. low number. So if I'm looking for like some a six seri- grit or a forty, if so I'm looking said, for some serious, no, it was your hand. And then I laughed so hard, and every time I saw him, I go, something pinched me. <laughs> Something pinched. So if you like, if you like a hand job that incorporates incorporates a little bit of like I don't know re- dead skin removal, I'm your gal. <laughs> yeah, you know when uh, people used to go to the mall and they'd have those kiosks in the middle of the area, and they're like, "Come over here, I'll show you. We can remove all of your dead skin." You know that little sugar station where they thing. yeah they do all that fun stuff, and it's like, oh my hands are so soft, mm, like a baby. <laughs> Libby can do that for your penis. <laughs> and you don't need your any hand. products. It's yeah, you just... don't need any products. You just need her to give it a good shake. So if she just gives you a few stern handshakes, you'll be done. You'll be good to go. Ow. Let me just hit her head on the uh, microphone. Well, I guess uh, if you're listening to this on Thanksgiving, happy Halloween. Or... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> If you're listening to this on Thanksgiving, uh, happy Thanksgiving. And uh, I'm curious if people are going to be setting up their Christmas decorations on Thanksgiving. We can get into that next week. Well, there's also some people who don't even live in the United States who don't celebrate it. So, um, okay, I guess I'll fucking kill myself. I guess those people, I don't know. Yeah, I want to know what you guys. I guess you guys didn't exploit Native Americans, so you don't have anything to celebrate. I don't know. If you live in a country where you didn't ex- exploit the native people, then what do you even celebrate? Well, they're probably just going to work. What's that, that stuff? It looks like toenails. <laughs> I don't know. It was on the paper towel, on the toilet paper roll. Oh, Randy's been cutting his toenails on the paper towel roll. Well, no, it's. I think the toilet paper has just been sitting here for so long, it's slowly <laughs> starting to disintegrate. Been here for at least six months. Um, how many racist things did we say today? Racist? Were we at all racist? Will we get canceled for anything that we said today? If anything, I think that uh, my character Dave in the Thanksgiving bit he 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 will definitely have a little blowback. Mm. But um, well, you know, at least I won't be canceled. The, <laughs> the, <laughs> uh, at least uh, Tina will be the only one that gets canceled. Woo. Well, no, I think that uh, guess what? If I get canceled for that character, so what? So be it. Was it and, racist of me to say Red Hawk was his name? Um, I probably Ugh. you're canceled. I'm canceled. So have a good night. Because generally, have a good Native Americans had sort of a, a, a their names named after an animal or. You're di- even- you are digging yourself a hole <laughs> that you're not going to be able to get out of. Here's what I will say. Let's just if we're gonna get canceled thing. over that, no, get the fuck out of here. If we're gonna get canceled over that, here's what I will say: then we should be storming the Washington Redskins football team every single day because they're still called that. Well, all I was trying to say is, Libby, you're doing great. We're not. I gotta look up Native American. We're names making now. fun. We're making fun. No, listen to some of these names. <clears throat> okay, I can't even say them. 
Cherokee Nation names. What I was trying to say is that we were on the side of the Native Americans and that white men ruin everything. Of course we are. And if somebody doesn't see that, then they should stop listening to the podcast right now. But if they take a soundbite of this, like when we get an audition on SNL and they take a soundbite, are we going to be able to be on SNL anymore? Context is everything. Okay. Context is everything and context matters. So with that, I say I am so thankful to every single customer, slop citizen in this that makes this possible. So some Cherokee names are. Oh, my God. Uh, Libby, Libby's, Libby's like so fuck. Libby's like, oh, my God. I'm going to oh be obsessing God, over it. For well, there's nothing to obsess over. Blossom, rain, water, fire. Fawn. See, they, they were named after animals. Libby, if anything, you should be canceled for that fucking shirt you're wearing. You're wearing a shirt that's got fucking three wolves howling in the middle of nowhere and a fucking falcon and Chelsea Lynn on it. You know who should be canceled? You. For wearing that fucking appropriating <laughs> Let's appropriate just be honest. Shirt. Just kidding. I have a wolf blanket on my uh, living room, in my living room, and it's amazing. Are, is there something wrong with wolves? No, I'm just fucking around libby's over here looking up these fucking names like it wasn't apparent we're making fun of the way americans fucking treat thanksgiving yeah but i don't want to i don't want to ever be making doing parodies of something and then inadvertently cause harm to someone else i'm gonna be honest i think you have made it way worse by uh <laughs> all of what you're doing right now uh, well i just want people to know that i uh, i'm trying hard you to be respectful you are doing great you're and, doing a great job because really, satire is all about uh, showing uh, the ridiculousness in other things. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I guess. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. So it's nice. I'm glad we had this time on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Randy, <laughs> Happy I guess Thanksgiving. We're gonna, we're, you're free now. You don't have to spend every Saturday doing this. Because we're canceled. You're so stupid. <laughs> oh, God. Ah! Guys, we love you. Thanks for listening to the podcast. If it's Thanksgiving for you today, great. If it's fucking Friday to you, great. If it's Thursday to you, great. We welcome every single person and every single human. You know what I say? I take Thanksgiving in, in uh, America as a day off. I'm just going to fucking eat a bunch of food. I'm not making mm-hmm. any fucking stupid ass finger hand turkeys. All right. But right. if you are, if you are making hand turkeys with your children or, uh, no, you know, because you're if appropriating you're just, turkeys, if you're just an adult and you woke up and you're like, you know what? I'm alone today, but I am going to make a fucking bomb ass hand turkey. Great. Do it. Do it on your neighbor's car. <laughs> Let's be honest. You know? Have you ever seen a turkey with five fingers sticking out of it or four fingers sticking out of its back? I haven't. I haven't either. You know what I will say? Epstein didn't kill himself. (laughs) Have a great day. Thank you so much. (laughs) And cut. (laughs) (laughs) Ding, ding.